It's going to be fantastic when the big house plays that fucking song <laughs> when he scores a touchdown in the end zone. And it, we're like, Hey man, is that one of our songs? It's one of our songs. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <Listen. to play? laughs> Holy shit. I, I tagged it all around the Dude, internet. I thought, so I'd be surprised. I, I swear to goodness. I thought like you, you pulled that from somewhere specific. Oh, I made that one. Yeah, I made yeah, that one. No, no, the moment with the, I thought you did, right? Like I was like, all right, here we go. That's and that's all right. Sudden, Authentic. Then you said, yeah, and then you were like, orgy plays that in the end zone, and blah blah. And I'm like, wait a minute, that would be is fantastic. This actually, something that's happened. Oh no, it'd be fantastic. Be oh, cool. it would be awesome. So cool. I, I don't yeah. think the school would embrace it. <laughs> hey, I mean, listen, but, but I mean, it's PG. If, it's PG. Michigan State puts up whatever they so choose. Yeah, um, correct. That's correct. You brought up a good point earlier, but what about the band, Florida State band playing while the team was on the field? That was pretty trashy. So terrible. I, I know schools the, do this, Cal but fans, not that way. The, not that much. And then the Cal fans getting their team two 15-yard penalties for throwing shit on the field. Oh, well, I have one for you. What about the the LSU player that went up to the, he would think he was going to hand the football to that kid. That a South Carolina kid and that kid gave him the middle finger and his mom just stood there. Whatever. I, I get it. You get frustrated as a fan, but to let your yeah. kid flip off a player. And I don't think the player was like doing anything well, I, crazy. I mean, the fact that the kid flipped off the player. You know, it, it tells me that like the parent was going to be okay with it. That's not. Yeah. Like, I feel be, like that's you, not the you know first I mean? time. Because, because the kid was st- so okay with doing it on such a massive stage right oh yeah this this was like breathing or blinking to that job. yeah it came out quick it was all bing there goes the bird and whatever i i i get your side i get what you're saying and i'm on your side but of course it doesn't make for good radio chatter right on the other side of it too with like cancel culture today and everything going on at, at least my kid ain't a bitch right i'm sorry i'm well, sorry right He's, <laughs> is he, but is he really standing up for himself you or is know, he just hey, listen, yeah I'm just saying, one, of the, one, one of the one of the good way. friends of the show makes a living doing heckling so i guess we can't really say <laughs> much one of shout the, out trust chirps <laughs> yeah trevi boy and one of the one of the coolest memes was like that little kid that soccer kid giving both words yeah. <laughs> yeah that so, is a meme Again, no, I was on your side. Oh, he's going to be a meme time. for a long time. Yeah, so. I, I get it. But as the, I would hope that in that situation, like my child would do that when I wasn't standing next to them, right? Because when I wasn't standing next to them, I can out loud be like, hey, 
he hangs out with the in-laws a lot. I can address <laughs> it to maybe his friends or something, yeah. Behind closed doors, I can be like, hell yeah, that's what we're about. When we go back outside, though, this is going to be a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different conversation going on. I can see both sides of it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just thought it was to, interesting. To keep the to keep the train going, I've, yeah. I haven't looked much up about this, but did you see the, the news of Colorado this week? And not Shadur Sanders just being... Dirt How did damage. all right? Yeah, we can break. We I don't know if we can find the video, and I don't know if we can play the video because it might be copyright. But yeah. talk about weird. I tell you what. I tell you what. Let's if you while you find the video, I'm going to talk this out to the audience. I found out something crazy, more or less. We don't know. So if you didn't want it, or don't want it or doesn't want us to use it, just send us a cease and desist order, order and we'll take, it, we'll take it right out. But until then, it's not like we're making any money off of it. <laughs> More or less. Yeah. We're still, in, we're still in hashtag hobby grind mode, which may change later on. But anywho, to set the, to set the mood lighting, apparently in Colorado this week, outside of the play, or maybe it was during the Nebraska week. But anyways, somebody straight drove a truck onto the field. Yeah, and hit and run looked, suspect. Yeah. Yeah, and it... The truck more or less looked like he didn't use one of the gateways. It, it looked like he found his way up on the second concourse. And yeah, then we, was like... It was like, yo, can send it, bro. <laughs> just sent it on. The, we haven't even gotten to the football side of things yet. This is just happening in the world of college sports this week. I'm starting to believe the reports of Colorado that it's more or less a GTA game. Deep cuts into the. All right. Yeah, here's the news conference. It looks like he did a couple burnouts, a little few pissies in there when he got in there. There's the, uh, the, the the crew chief addressing the situation, the state trooper talking about the situation. There's the truck. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. That truck is screwed. But it wasn't as screwed up as when I saw it in the video. Oh, yeah. It, it gets to that point it's, <laughs> throughout yeah, the video it here. ended up on the 40-yard line causing 150,000 dam. Wow. Yeah, he's going to be going to prison for a little while. 25 years of policing. It's one of the most, and this is Colorado. For him to say this is one of the most interesting, unique things to negotiate with him for a while. So there's yeah, a I mean, video. There's a video of the truck. Police officers. Police. It looks like he's. So color, yeah, Colorado Stadium is just a bowl. Yeah, so he just barreled through the gates and took the ambulance route onto the field with a terribly destroyed vehicle. Yeah, hit and run, I guess, is what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 48 years old from Maryland, I believe, is what it was. Oh. Maryland, hey? Yeah, they're just... Yeah, that's one way to fill her up. They're out there with shovels taking her down. Yeah, they gotta rip it up, rip it apart, and then patch that up. They'll have it taken care of in no time. Oh, yeah, before game they day. Got, they got new pitch coming in. They what got nothing to figure out. But I just don't understand so, what condemns you to think that's the best place to go. Do you just not know where you're going at that point? Or are you just saying, you know what, F, and I'm getting pulled over. I'm going to prison. I might as well go have a little bit of fun. To try to put myself in the mindset of that individual. Let's attempt Nobody to... got hurt, but it's just a really exactly. stupid thing to do. Really stupid thing as to do. As you were scrolling, I was able to catch bits and pieces. And apparently, throughout getting to the uh, football stadium, he hit, almost hit quite a few people, um, almost caused quite a bit of destruction. Okay. I'm in a road rage incident. I'm generally a good person. All right. But I'm on the road. I'm having a bad day. Yep. Somebody cuts me off. Something happens. Hit and run. I, I don't know that portion of the story, so I could be completely off-putting at this part. But let's just, bad day gets me into the hit and run, whether it was my fault or not. Now I'm just angry, and I'm on the run. Or maybe I wasn't paying attention, and I got scared, and I was on the run. Yeah. So now that I'm on the run, now I'm in a hairball situation. 
and I'm angry and I'm not thinking clearly and this not thinking clearly then like forces me to have to swerve. I'm trying to hit people. Then all of a sudden like this light clicks on and I'm like, listen, I'm screwed anyways. If I'm going to stop, I might as well make the news. Let's go. Right. Let's go check out Colorado's football. Sure. State. Yeah. I think this is just a snowball effect that the uh, random shit happened and it just bing, 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 like, bing, it, yeah, more it things was happen. Just random and like, it was like, listen, this is the safest spot for me to be that guy. Maybe I'll get a book or something out of this later on. Like I'm screwed already. So well, you know, for sure you're going to be a t-shirt. Yeah. Let me do the least amount of damage to human, to humans while maximizing my national attention. I might as well. Let's rock it out, baby. I'm here. I'm, I'm in it to win it. But apparently it still didn't uh, make the, the front page of the news because the team itself made the news more than the uh, what yeah, happened yeah, then, inside then the Nebraska stadium and what happened stinger. outside of the stadium. Yeah, I ended up ra hit randomly hearing about this from a beat writer on a, on a radio show from Colorado whose like, main job over the last few years is been Colorado football and unfortunately you know, his words unfortunately Dion came into the picture now we'll take it a little bit step further a lot of the fans are starting to murmur and speak out and say that Dion Sanders might have been the worst thing that happened to their program not the best thing because they might be better off without him had the had he not came because of all the negative publicity and the things that are me. around that team this reminds me of a movie scenario yeah. where probably a couple of them this individual was voted in as the youngest mayor of the town in its history i think he was like 18 years old and he ended up spending the entire town's fiscal year budget on an ice festival that bankrupt the city and it was like super flashy and super cool and then yeah. After the initial flash, the pain and like the build up, right? It was like, hey, all you have to do is keep giving me hundreds of dollars and I'll give you a million dollars. Right. Okay. There's never a time though when I told you I was going to give you that million dollars. And it feels like the same scenario there in, in good old Colorado. It. it you can't fault him for being a dad, but as a football fan, as a football fanatic, yeah, what the hell was Colorado thinking? We are on board with FSU at this point, hiring Novell over Dion. Yeah, we, even we, though they're zero three, even though they're zero three, they're still in a much better hey, situation. If you played three powerhouse teams like they did, you'd be zero three also, bro. That's what Norvell said today in the press conference, actually. Oh, you were like powerhouse <laughs> teams. And I'm like, I don't ever think of Georgia Tech and them as powerhouses. I understand what he's saying. This, But man, they fell flat on their face, but not quite as much as Colorado did. It, did you read the was, thing, though? The GTA thing came back to this, Charles. And you talked yeah. about this last year. You said they're walking around puffing their chest like they're in Alabama or a Georgia when they haven't won a goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And the, the argument that time to come back is, well, there it's confidence, not cockiness at times, can be confused with confidence, but cockiness can be there under the mask of confidence. And that's what we have in this situation. Yeah. Wins should be humbling for them, not expected. They walk around after a win expecting to win in the transfer portal era a team like colorado state is going to be good once every three to seven years yeah right because you're going to have a handful of good players that that have grown in the system that that weren't seen somewhere else and they're going to make some some good plays against a team's caliber like colorado and, and you'll have a game like we had last year. But for the most part, you're going to have games like you had this year. It's just playing against Rutgers in the Big Ten, right? Every once in a while, Rutgers has a good football team because of lineage. Yeah. Somebody some, somewhere deep in the family went to Rutgers, and that's why my child's in Rutgers. But he wins a championship in Alabama type shit, right? Yeah. Colorado is not where you go to transfer. It. <clears throat> and it's it, it's not about the coaching to me or it's about the football to me as much as we talk about 
everything else when it comes to Colorado that isn't football. And and that's, I think, what the bottom line is with Colorado. And I believe that's why most of the country now is on board with the rest of us fanatics where, where we've yeah. been. Is honestly the only good thing that happens to Colorado is when they lose anybody. And that's just because we don't have to hear them for the next week. Oh, Instagram we went... is going to be pretty boring. Instagram is going to be pretty, pretty sufferable. Oh man. I, yeah, I don't even, I don't even, I follow him, but I, I don't we really follow what he posts. We yeah. yeah. We have to because of the world we live in right now. But you, but. we went through the schedule uh, and you picked all the games and they literally are not going to be favored in another game this year. Colorado State was the last game they were favored in. They will not be favored yeah. throughout the rest of the season. Now, on the other side of this, teams that I think, let's talk about Nebraska for a minute. They're the revitalization of Nebraska? Yeah, we can that's talk what about I this. Want, see, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah, it's Matt Rule, sp- bringing back Nebraska Matt football. Is, yeah, Matt, Matt Rule is really nice, and there's a great environment, and the media, the social media crew in Nebraska is doing really, really Who well. would have ever thought that a ma- a, a matchup with Illinois in Nebraska would be this, ex- this exciting this week? This might be the game of the week in the Big Ten. They're yeah, two I mean, ranked Illinois teams. coming off of a win yeah. against Central Michigan, 30 to 9. <clears throat> But is the hype too soon with Nebraska? I guess that's my biggest question with this. Because, bro, it wasn't a few less than a moon cycle back. They could potentially be going in. Nebraska. They could potentially be going into Ohio State undefeated at 7-0. and And Ohio State being number two, probably be number two in the country behind maybe Texas or... Alabama, maybe, or Georgia. I don't, well, Georgia's probably not looking as great. It's pretty much down to Texas and Ohio State as far as the top two teams. But yeah, they could be a top 10 team heading into Ohio State, but that's Ohio State is a completely different animal than anybody else they've played this season or are going to play. 21 million. 20 or 20 million different. Yeah. 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 Or about 17 million different. Yeah. Let's see. So they've got Illinois coming up. If Nebraska is who I think they are, this is going to be a really good game. If Nebraska yeah. is who people are portraying them to be right now, I think Nebraska blows out Illinois. I don't think it's going to be a good game. They have a decent defense. They, they've always had a pretty decent defense. Nebraska's defense has never really been the question. Their offense what, the last few years has always been a question mark. They can score a little bit, but then they can't keep scoring. They turn the ball over. It's always been a quarterback issue. Yes, it's too young. They're too young to say that a freshman quarterback is always going to make mistakes. They've only given up 20 points in three games. Yeah. UTEP, Colorado, and... Northern Iowa, the University of Northern Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got Illinois, Purdue, Rutgers, Indiana, then Ohio State, and then finishes UCLA, USC, Wisconsin, Iowa. They could potentially finish the season and with two losses. They could I win. Mean, the, they could win the West. Is it possible for Nebraska to finish with one loss? Is it possible? Yes, it's Wisconsin, possible. Wisconsin lost their quarterback, ACL, uh, ACL sprain or tear. He's done. He's gone. Did it would he? be USC would be the other team because it's a road game for him at the Rose yeah. Bowl, which one isn't going to be easy. Nebraska's at home, and then Iowa's at home. Yeah. Have we, have we... No, Iowa's on the road as well. It's a night game, so that'll be tough too. Regard- Iowa's always tough at night. Oh, yeah, I meant Iowa at Iowa. Their three toughest games are Ohio State, USC, and Iowa, and they're all on the road, so that's not that doesn't bode well. You're not going to win all three of those, more than likely. But if you win two out of three of those... Do we expect USC to be 11 or better at this point in the season in November? In November, I think you would guess because I believe the teams are all going to beat up on each other. USC is probably going to have maybe one loss by November. I mean, USC I, is looking better than Oregon up until this week. Yeah, they're more consistent for sure. Offensively, they're consistent. Defensively, they've got some decent players. I'm, just, I'm uh, worried about. I'm it's worried coaching about for me. Coaching for me is the question mark. 
I don't think Nebraska is going to go one loss. I think no, I don't think so either. I think maybe two or three, 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 three losses. I think think three losses. Yeah, I think with Iowa playing the way they are, you're going to get. I think I I just Nebraska's got such a huge fan base. Yeah. From volleyball, wasn't isn't Nebraska the school that put fifty thousand in the stands for a volleyball yeah. match, a women's How, volleyball match? Yeah. How about Indiana welcoming UCLA last week into the Big Ten with a forty-two to thirteen beatdown? I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. I saw uh, that. That was funny. Is Chip Kelly? Did Chip Kelly laugh, or did Chip Kelly feel like I made the right decision? I'm assuming he's probably thinking he made the right decision because, you know, he's with Ohio State now, so well, I mean, he doesn't have to deal that, with it. That, so after that ass whooping, yeah, yeah. Let's check on. Let's check on what were all the schools that came in again now. And so you had USC. Oh, so Washington got freaking taken back got, to the woodshed by Washington by State. Washington yes, State. Yeah, everyone, uh, was Wisconsin eighth meeting or I think. Yeah, it was it was a monumental one. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you've got Washington. USC in Oregon. So UCLA, Washington, USC, twenty-four nineteen, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. And and did Washington State go into Washington and do that? I think that's the coolest part of it. Uh, meeting Prairie yes, they were at home. A and M. Sweet, uh, Michigan State beating Prairie View A and M, forty to nothing. Well done. I wonder how much they paid Prairie View A and M. The two teams that they they actually should have lost the first game to Florida Atlantic if it wasn't for Florida Atlantic throwing the freaking the interception there to when they were driving they probably would have lost seventeen sixteen. Maryland Maryland is one of those teams you never know what the hell they're gonna do. You never know who they are. They one week they can score forty five, the next week they score three points. Uh, Michigan State is uh, probably gonna get waxed by Boston uh, College this week. No, um, yeah, Michigan, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I was just, I was laughing. They probably paid that Prairie School over a milli to come in and get their ass kicked. So and Prairie, you got to pay for wins nowadays. And Prairie that's, View, that's something dangerous. That's something dangerous to look at. By the way, this oh, yeah. the whole Florida State scenario moving on with the schedule, and depending on what happens with schools like Michigan, Oregon, and USC, if the playoff committee doesn't look at a three and four loss strength of schedule team performance over a two loss paid for win schedule you'll we'll never see these games again like the michigan texas game before the playoffs there'll be no point and we'll never see them so we'll literally only see michigan playing teams like fresno state from week one until the playoffs because it's all about how you beat the teams like that not how you got beat or how you played in strength of schedule games what do you think about that yeah it's gonna it's gonna affect a lot of different things and i can also see a team like that saying hey we're gonna drop one of these other schools that we've had a reputation with like maybe the ohio state drops in ohio and then picks up like a smaller tier team still a team that they can beat the crap out of but a team that maybe is a little more prestigious because it looks a little better on the resume when we still beat them 45 to zero you know but but that's what i'm getting at that, that we're about to get that answer yeah, we're going to. Year. Yeah. Because there's three or four schools <clears throat> that at the beginning of the year, like Oregon, at the beginning yeah. of the year, if they just play cakewalk schools, they're projected into the playoffs, right? Like it just it didn't matter, right? But now Well, let's let's break it down that, right here. Um, now that they're playing other schools or teams like USC or man, I can't Texas being one of them. Texas looks really good. No, it's just, it's it's funny to me. It'll be funny to me, right? Because I guess one school in particular this year would be Michigan, right? Because we're playing like Texas. Yeah, I'm going to break it down here for a Oregon, second. Oregon, USC, on. Washington, Ohio State. Next year, what if we see us playing teams like Marist and Virginia Lynchburg? Presbyterian beat Virginia Lynchburg 52 to zero. But we will be seeing teams like Virginia Lynchburg all season until the playoffs. 
At one yeah. point, Michigan had would have had had they all the teams played and not lost this last three weeks had yeah. seven out of their 12 teams that they played were ranked in the top 25. That's big, that's SEC type scheduling and that's not easy. Right. Now there's still five. Also, Texas was This is also a schedule built This is a very difficult by, schedule to be honest. It's a schedule built and created by somebody who planned to be here but the winds changed direction and things went otherwise. The plan was always to get a Texas. The, the Texas one is actually cool. I really like that they did that. They get rid of one of those crappy teams because and play like, somebody. Like the Northern Illinois and Notre Dame game specifically. Neither yeah. AD nor head coach while at Notre Dame, or currently at Notre Dame now, was at Notre Dame when this game was scheduled. Right. So we're in a schedule era right now that was more or less created by the mind of Harbaugh. You want to break this down? Michigan's only two victories are the only team's losses that the teams that they played, right? So both mm -hmm. those teams are two and one. Fresno State's two and one, by the Fres way. Fresno, Fresno State, State just won 48 games. to nothing last week versus North, uh, New Mexico yeah. State. So for, Fresno State is not a, a they're supposed no, to I'm win their you, conference, a, for God's sakes. Yeah, this was a Harbaugh built schedule. For and a I believe made team. I, I believe <laughs> Arkansas <laughs> State as well is supposed to win their conference as well. But it, it's, it, it is what it is. We're at the mercy of waiting for this to play out, see what happens at the end of the season. Like I told you, I said, I'm all about the orgies in the end zone. Yes, we got the yeah. orgies in the end zone. We'll jump on Michigan right now. They can absolutely win against USC this week. It, it's got to come down to the pass defense, which has been terrible. And that Four run game defense. has to be consistent yeah, run come. game. Yep. <laughs> And the turnover battle, of course, which I don't understand. One well, injury, we'll break it down right now, Charles. What do you think USC's weakness is? I have no idea right now. So they know. beat I'm, Utah State 48 to nothing. LSU 27-20. Louis, well, these... even looked it up yet. Go ahead. Keep going, sir. These are the last... These are their last two games or whatever. Yeah. So they beat LSU 27-20, which that doesn't really look that great anymore after watching LSU almost lose to South Carolina. Carolina. Utah State is not the same Utah State team that we were used to seeing. I think they're one and two. Quarterback is 48 to 62 for 200 for 600 yards and only two touchdowns. They're yeah, running back, I'm 29 carries, right buck now. 71. I would say their their run defense is probably going to be their weakness versus Michigan. Michigan has got a de has a, one of the bigger offensive lines in college football, but maybe not the most talented like we we had in the past. But <laughs> USC's quarterback just the picture I've got did you right see? Now, yes, dude, did I tell he you? Looks like he looks like he didn't brother. comb his fucking hair. Yeah, he looks like that brother off of. Step brothers, the wedding, not crashers. Step. Wedding, wedding crashers, wedding crashers. Yeah, <laughs> <like he doesn't laughs> <always. laughs> I'm gonna go paint. <laughs> You're going to oh, go God. paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you oh, guys know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, or he looks like a frat kid that just got woken up off the couch and said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You're not part of this frat. Rush week's yeah. over, bitch. They got a tight end doing work right now, it looks like. Is that a McCree? Yeah. Who also looks like he just woke the fuck up off the couch. Yeah, and Hudson. Yeah, they, those two look like twins. What the fuck's going on in California? Ah, California's a weird place. Weird place. I don't know, man. I just... <clears throat> I think the big house is an environment. That... It's, it's an advantage yeah, for sure know. for Michigan to be playing at home in this game, for sure. Yeah, I say that, but the way Texas beat our ass, dude, I had fuck it. Just and then the way we played last week, <laughs> it's not very reassuring to say. I'm not very confident in saying that Michigan is going to blow anybody out anymore. That's just that. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can say this year. They we can do we think they're going to win? Yeah, but man, it could be ugly. It could be ugly for Michigan to win these games. We are going to need breakdown on their offense 
Yeah. So deflections, overthrows, sacks, and fumbles. Like that's where that we're gonna need a handful of those. Not a handful each, just a handful. Special teams is gonna have to be elite. And we're gonna have to hold on to the ball. I just don't see us doing that this year. And that's it is what it is. I this is the last year of it. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a bad dream when it comes to Michigan football, to be honest with you. Because you don't want to, you don't want to be too negative. But at the same time, you, you just got to read the writing on the wall. We're a good team, but we're not a great team, and that that is, it's. How yeah, hard they was are. it going to be to, to following up Team One Forty Four? Yeah, it was going to be One Forty Five was yeah. always going to be, and that's not Team One Forty Five's fault. To be honest with no. you, that's You're the top's f- fault. That's the top's fault. You didn't spend any money in the transfer portal. Not a damn thing. You, you no, but they keep, ta- keep they keep players. talking about this bullshit too, like saying that they're going to spend money, saying that they got the collective. That's yeah, what well, irritates I mean, that's, me. At twenty eight, you got twenty eight milli or twenty three or twenty eight milli set aside for next year. It's it's going to be there. It's almost is it almost like they they knew that they weren't going to be able to get some of these players, so they're like, you know what, let's just freaking. Let's just bank a bunch of money and we'll get the ne- we'll get the best players next year. I don't think that was the case at all. The, this the kids just followed the money. Apparently, well, no, but that's as, what I mean. They, easy, no, it was as easy as just hey, what, what was Ohio State giving you? We'll give you a dollar more. All right. Like I, from my understanding, the way Ohio State pulled from that pool, like they were just. Well, no, saying, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is they already they knew. Ohio State was going to do this. Why compete with them financially when Ohio State's going to basically put them set, if they don't win the national championship? Which one of those guys next year is going to want to give that amount of money if they're not going to win? It's not they're not going to get that twenty million again next year. I can almost guarantee you that they're not going to keep yeah. forking out twenty million a year. That's insane. I, I I see I see that side of it, and I I don't disagree with you. I just I'm sitting on the other side where if Ohio State's giving you ten dollars, I'm giving you fifteen. And now you're choosing now you're either choosing Ohio State because you don't like Michigan or you're taking the money, which is exactly what I think you would do. At it's some point it is about taking the money. We we're in that now. It's over. There is no there's no free to play anymore. That Michigan's right. national championship that's, that's was the all, last that's, one that's of what it. I'm saying. That's that's all Ohio State did this year. Yeah. And and, and just Michigan didn't play. I'd and if Okay, if you tell me that, hey, we caught wind that Ohio State was going to break the bank and we didn't know what the bank was, I, I can see that, right? Okay, the bank's 20 million, right? Okay, now we know 23 to 28 million is where we're going to need to be next year. And at the end of next year's college football free agency, hashtag. Yeah. Transfer portal. Portal, yeah. Tra- transfer we'll, agency. We'll, yeah. We'll see what the new salary cap is, because more or less <laughs> that's just what it is, right? We need to do that next year. We need it next. We'll start the season at the end of the year. We'll find out who's going to be uh, transferring, and we'll put a number above their head and what we think they're going to go for, what team they're going to yeah. go to, and it's going to be there's going to be a handful, like five, six teams. It's going to be Texas A and M, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio well, State, I mean, Michigan, that, Notre Dame. That's where I think Michigan might lose or have to spend more, but would never really be able to match, right? Because when you have a school, okay, so if I'm a baller, right? And I love Michigan, man, I do. I love the football, Michigan. I love the stadium. But the moment I went to visit the stadium and you had me doing those fucking stupid left turns, and then Texas was like, yo, check out this facility along with all this oil money and we're tax-free. I'm going to Texas a and and it's nothing against Michigan. So that, at times, I think is going to have a huge effect on football. <coughs> I think Alabama getting a new $20 million um, football complex. Michigan is in the top three, I believe, as far as their weight room and stuff goes. I don't think oh, anybody absolutely. even comes no, no. close. The- Again, when it comes to the program and the facilities on the school, it, they're second to almost none. Well, see, they're, the, them, they are supposed 
they're supposed to they're supposed to put this collective together and it's supposed to be the largest one in college football is what they said they keep saying this over and over again i don't know where yeah, the money's the coming from but they're but that doesn't yeah. mean for all time it just may like you said maybe next year they're gonna spend 28 million instead of 20 like ohio state did that's well that there is no regulate okay so let me ask you this with no regulated salary cap how do you know how much to spend next year you don't until you find out what Ohio State, what twenty million got Ohio State. At. I don't know if our conversations are are getting crossed. I feel like there's some confusion in a, in a in a way. I think this year in general, going back to, I don't know how much money to spend this year, and with the allegations looming, it's probably best that we just hang out. Instead oh, for sure. It's the, because they didn't yeah, know what was going to happen. They right. didn't know what the NCAA right. was going to do. Why right. spend $23 you, million you I, if you're going to be banned from the from competing right. for a championship? But I, the, I guess where I'm also getting confused is you and I have both reported on the show in other episodes that the Michigan Collective, I can't remember the exact number, has 23 or $28 million Yeah, they've got more. Yeah, there's no so, reason. Yeah. So there should be no question in your mind that Michigan isn't spending money next year. Like they're, we're spending yeah. money next year. Yeah, I believe it. Now that they know yeah, that the hammer right. didn't come, so I think now is the, I mean, now they know. I think it was twenty eight million actually. Yeah. They're gonna they're spending money now. Okay, so we're on the same page. Yeah. So now when it comes to that money being spent, it doesn't matter how beautiful the fucking weight room is in Michigan when I don't have to deal with taxes or cold weather at Texas A and M. And Texas A and M is gonna give me just as much money. That's what I was saying. That's maybe Michigan's, that's yeah, but Michigan's you, you talk to a lot of athletes if you watch a lot of them they don't really care about the weather the matter of fact a lot of them like playing in the cold i don't think that weather has as much of a factor on it as we think it does maybe for other things like women and beaches and being able to those but those players are the players that aren't going to be in the nfl anyway that are going to be making I, money I, they're just there I, in listen, college I, to make I, the money it, fuck it, it, it's hilarious to me when you hear an sec player who's asked about going up and playing in the cold one time if it bothers them and they go, no, but playing in the cold doesn't bother me. Then why are you playing at Kentucky? There's That's a reason why, why he's at Kentucky, at Kentucky too. Kentucky. We know, Charles, we know money talks and it makes I'm people just, walk I, I, as well. So I'm just, I'm just adding to that portion of the conversation. Weather has a huge, listen, if you're telling me that I can be, that I've got a choice of December in Michigan, Detroit or Ann Arbor, Michigan, or wherever the hell Texas A&M is. And I, listen, as much as you love building snowmen, you're, how are you passing up Texas tax free? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the best players are only the ones from the South. That's a weird thing that a weird thing to I'm say. Not, you know, I don't give a fuck if this could be a guy coming from Europe. I'm saying Michigan and Texas A&M are on the table. It's the same amount of money. Yeah, they went to Ohio State and the weather's exactly the same. So I guess it doesn't make any sense, I guess. They got top tier talent Texas, going there. Was Texas A&M and Ohio State bidding on the same players? For the yes, Texas I'll, quite, a, quite a few of them they were. It was been dealt between them Ohio, and Texas. Players Alabama. went to Ohio State because they paid them more. Yes, and that's, that's what's, what's going to happen next line. year. Okay, so Texas A&M was not matching Ohio State. So, no, so the, it's going to so, be Texas so, money. So, so in this scenario that I was trying to build in this scenario, right? Michigan's giving you $10 and Texas A&M is giving you $10, right? Take the fandom out of it, bro. Where are you going? Nobody's going to Texas A&M because they suck anyway, so. Texas, now you want to talk about Texas, we'll talk about Texas. I don't, I don't want to talk about Texas A&M. What are you, what are you talking, what do you mean, dude? And by the way, te Texas and a Texas and Amon have been trash for the last time of years. This is the first year that Texas is actually doing anything last year and this year. They were terrible is, for how long? The college football of the past is gone. Yeah, they may have been. No, no. How could you say that? They just started being able to pay them last year. What do you yes, mean it's, that, it's been this, done? It, it, no, I said it's gone. Yeah. The, the college football of the past is gone. I know, but course, we got the money to compete with them now. So I don't, the playing field should be leveled out next season because of all the yeah, money. I, mean, I guess it'll, it'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm telling you right now, when it comes to, when it comes to $3 million tax free or $3 million with Michigan tax, and I'm a young punk kid, I'm, I'm more out than that. We're going to go tax free. We're talking about money now. It's $3 million tax free is a hell of a lot better than $3 million taxed. 
Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff down in Texas though that makes that's changing right now. A lot of stuff is changing in Texas. It's not as uh, luxurious and nice as it used to be. We know a couple people who live there that probably could tell you that too. It's yeah, the the, the tax thing definitely makes a huge difference. You can't argue that at all. You these players they have to have lawyers. You got to have somebody telling them, hey man, exactly like what you said. And I believe there's other states too that is tax free. I don't think Texas isn't the only one. I believe there's eight or nine of them, if I remember correctly. I just never, I never remember which ones they are, which yeah. ones, but yeah, you a hundred percent, Charles, if, if it doesn't matter anybody in Texas, it could be the Texas state Aggies or whatever. And they could be like, Hey man, we'll give you a three and a half million dollars to come and you can be the name of our program. You'd be our starting quarterback. And he says, all right. Cause next year I'll take the money and I'll just transfer out to a big name school. Like you said, yeah, they'll take the money. Hundred percent. As a Michigan fan, I would love to believe this. I, that's it's the college world we've walked into. I wonder if they're going to find a way for these athletes, though, to maybe them on what pay them away how that they don't they don't get hit with this huge. I know it's impossible because of the way the government works, but it's like it would really help these kids out if maybe the money. I don't know. I know there's just no way around it because of the state that you're in. It sucks. Oh, and unfortunate. Yeah, the tax yeah, board. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. It's, 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 this is the new structure of college football. Yeah. We I are mean, not going to be battling for... This is why states like Illinois and New York are going to suffer big time for this because your yeah, tax rates like freaking almost double what everybody else absolutely. is. Absolutely. You're not going to be picking from the top tier anymore. Yeah. You're going to be picking from the bottom top tier, which is more or less once schools like Texas and Georgia and Alabama and you know, you're going to have roster spots are filled. You will have kids who still pick Michigan or Ohio State or USC, but when you have that, you and I are discussing now, you just as a human being, when these options are based in front of you, even $10 in Michigan is not going to be more than $7 in Texas or one of those other states. And that's, well, that's just the bottom line. Even putting it this way, like you were saying, your bottom tier, your middle tier programs now are the teams that used to be competing for national championships, like Clemson. Uh, yeah. I, Clemson does not use the transfer portal and they don't spend, they won't spend money. Same thing with Oklahoma. These teams used to compete for national championships. <laughs> They're not going to do that anymore. They Washington. Any yeah. They, I mean, you know, Oregon is, going. Oregon's got Nike money. They're going to, they're going to spend yeah. money. They're not yeah. going to be hurting it anytime yeah. soon, but. Yeah, I, under, I I get that. All these blue bloods like Ole Miss, that's why Ole Miss is coming back. It does leave the door open for every once in a while. Schools like Princeton and Harvard. Yeah, you get a, you get a school every now and then. Yeah. A private alumni collective. Yeah. And hey, let's shoot hey, for let, let, Hey, $50 million over the course of four right, let's four years. In. Let's go for it. Let's go for let's it. Go ball to the natty. walls. Let's shoot. Wow. Because Stan Stanford won sure. one at one point, so why the can't they? Five. Stanford, that was the old college. This is the no, I understand ever. that, but I'm saying just because you're smart doesn't mean you can't go to a prestigious yeah. school and play football. Well, so, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. But besides that point, again, yeah, for real, but I, I know what you're to, saying. They're all there's lots of smart yeah. athletes, but I'm saying they're gonna get a they have these, they have to get a collective because the stringent rules okay, are to so get into freaking Harvard well, and Yale. Yes, it's but, not that but, easy, but, you know. Okay, but my theory behind this is a bunch of the the smart rich fuckers got together and went, hey, let's buy a football team and try. Yeah, to that's what I'm saying, year. too. I said $50 million need, dollars. We, go yeah, for we it. Don't, we don't need these 4.0 motherfuckers this year. Let's go out and get some solid 2832 motherfuckers and with us a natty, <laughs> right? Well, like, we're a on. whole team full of dum-dums. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get us in trouble. Well, Harvard, yo, I don't really give a shit. I, I can't. I never could have got in there, so I don't really care. <laughs> it is what it is. It's just <laughs> sometimes the road signs aren't telling us what road we're going down to. <laughs> eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We those kind of people don't listen to us anyway, so it's fine. But that's the type of collective that I mean. That's what the collective has. That's what the collective brings to the table. Yeah. So as much as it, yeah, that's cool. A twelve-team playoff. That's awesome but it's really going to be about a two or three team playoff. 
Like, you think really a, uh, it's going to come down to? You think one of those teams gets in there this year? What's that? One of those teams sneaks in the twelve teams. You think like a U.S. No. a UCF or any? You don't think a UCF no. makes it in but the no, Big Twelve? No, I don't think so. Would I be shocked if it happened? No, because it's football, and I've been watching it for a really long time. I guess the, the only the one that has a chance is probably Northern Illinois because they play wow. NC State still. That's the toughest they team they play, but they beat Notre Dame. Dame. Yeah, well, Notre Dame isn't a good win. Even if Notre Dame turns the table. Well, they keep, they keep like, saying Notre Dame is a chance to get in. How the fuck does Notre Dame have a chance to get in? Listen, a lot of bad things like, need to happen. It's probably like a 5 or five or 6% chance, maybe. I don't know. It, but the, now the reason I, I'm saying no to your question more specifically is because with the collective, we will know when a school like what we're talking about is making a push. Because at the end of the college football free agency, hashtag transfer portal, the numbers will come out and all of a sudden it'll be like, yo, Harvard spent $24 million this year. Yeah. And you start and, you, and people start following the players and it's holy shit. Harvard's going to make a massive push for the playoffs this year. Yeah. And you look at their schedule and it's holy cow, that looks great. And it's, yeah, they're going to be playing like, nobody. Now, but you know, and when they get into the 12 team playoff as like a six or a seven, yeah, no big deal because they're really like the number one, two, or three team in the country on paper, and they just demolish the fucking playoffs. And it's a story everyone loves because it's Harvard. And it, you know what the it's crazy not a thing like is, Alabama or Georgia. I can't even wrap my head around that happening, but the way that you just said it makes me. Like, I'm going to dream about it tonight. Dream about I mean, Harvard winning a the, national championship. <laughs> the collective allows this type of atmosphere. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, yes. You are never going to have all. Okay, so the, what teams that aren't ever going to spend any money? Your military academy, right? Yeah. There, yeah. That's no, there's no way. There's no and, way that'll be a big red flag if that ever happens. And Clemson. Everyone else spent money. <laughs> yeah. Everybody so, else spent money. Army, Navy, yeah. Air Force. Nope. And Clemson. Clemson. Nope. <laughs> so, and Clemson. So everyone's doing it. It's just a matter of it's just a matter of when are you gonna when are you gonna pull the trigger? Like when are you as the alumni going to group up collectively and throw in a few extra millies and try to put an addy on that tape? Yeah. And that's what we're gonna see. I, that I think is the most exciting thing. What do you think a national championship was worth? College, as an ever right now, 20 million. Cause that's what Ohio state spent to try and get Michigan won win. one without spending all that money. What do you think it's worth? What do you think they revenue wise? What do you think that brought in last year? Oh God. I don't know. We'll have to look it up. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, I want to know that too. I, I just want to, I know it doesn't, bad. I know that isn't going to reflect how much money they're going to spend next year. No. I'm just curious how much no, no, we believe. Yeah. I was going to say it has actually, it has absolutely nothing to do with no. it. <laughs> if that's the way issues. that it worked to be like you, every team, yeah. every year, they would be, have a hell of a bankroll. Yeah. The university of Michigan is not spending any money on this collective period. No. So for our listeners, not to get any of that screwed up. It doesn't matter how much money we made on the national championship. None of that way, goes towards anything. But the way that you than, listen to people comment on things, you would think that they think that's how it works. But yeah, yeah, it's no, hard it's, sometimes. I, yeah, absolutely not how it works. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. My puppies are my puppies. Can you run through the Michigan running backs real quick? We had we were having an interesting conversation about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michigan running backs. Yes, sir. Get to our game of the week in the Big Ten. Game of the week in the Big Ten. Michigan, USC, 2.30 Saturday afternoon. All right, all right. So Michigan is led in the backfield. Khalil Mullings, 36 carries, 270 yards. Donovan Edwards, also 36 carries. Like you said, a split backfield, 36 carries, 150. Alex Orgy coming in with 10 carries in number three with 58 yards. Benjamin Hall, six carries. Samaj Morgan, two for 22. And Davis Warren, eight for zero yards. Yeah, it's a weird thing, Charles. 
The uh, Khalil Mullings long is 38. The longest run that Donovan Edwards had this season, 12 yards. And the thing that frustrates me is I remember the Mullins 38 run, and I was thinking to myself, man, if that was Edwards, he, he would have been gone. Right? And th that was just it, – there was it wasn't a run. It wasn't a cut that Mullins did. It wasn't anything. It was literally just a beautiful hole opened up by yeah. the offense, and it was a running back that hit the hole beautifully, untouched, got to the sideline untouched, and then got caught because he wasn't as fast. And I guess my questioning with this, Edwards is a dude, man. He's a great dude. He is a an amazing personality. But I, I really wish that he would have just went to the NFL, right? For him to come back this season and split carries with 36, and 30, I must be seeing something different here, right? Because it's the only reason Edwards wasn't the guy last year is because Corum came back. Edwards came back to be our Corum this year. And it's not like he, he can't. Edwards has performed in big game after big game and moment after moment. I, I, explain this 36-36 split carry thing with me. It, it's all, it all comes down to production. They both have 36 carries. Donovan Edwards only has 150 yards. Mullins has 270. Right. So he averages almost eight yards a carry, Mullins does. So we know the, the better running back this year. Well, there's no question. Now, just looking at those paper stats, I don't disagree with you. But let's say Mullins has 15 carries and those other 11 carries went to Edwards. How many yards would Edwards have? And would that big break yard would have been a touchdown? So instead of it being 38, yeah, it's a bunch of woulda, coulda, shouldas that just that don't that don't sit with me. What the heck? I well, guess my had, question is. He's had 36 chances to break doing? one and he hasn't done it. He had 36 wow. chances to break one for in the biggest one he broke was for 12 yards. You can't just keep giving it. Obviously there's something wrong with Edwards from what I'm thinking is that it, it, why can Mullins Mullings get through the line, but Edwards can't, there's gotta be a reason for it. Maybe he's not well, healthy. Think, thinking back situationally again, that that's the one run that blows all this stat out is that 38 yard run. That we well, talked take, about to start. This. Take the thirty-eight and, yard run out. He still has eighty yard, eighty more rushing yards than him. Yeah, I guess I'm just looking at it differently. I think it would, Edwards, if Edwards had fifty carries, he'd have over three hundred yards, a different average, and had more opportunities for the breaks, which is something he had. Which is was always Edwards was never the first option. Even last year, I don't know if he was actually all healthy well, last Edwards, year either. Edwards wasn't going to be the first option with when you have Blake Corum. No, but I don't even I think he was the number two last year. I thought that last year Mullins uh, was in there was, quite you know, a bit. You'll have to pull the stats up. Mullins was in, but no, Edwards was the solid number two. Last year. I think the crazy, the crazy thing is that it took Edwards eight games to get a touchdown. Yeah. That, that was one of the things. What's, maybe what's going on in practice? Yeah, you don't so know. So we, we, we go from Donovan Edwards being great and deciding to come back this year, and now we're just comfortable with him being a terrible running back. And Mullings is just the better running back. I wouldn't say he's a terrible running back, but he's there's clearly there's a lot of things on the field. Is it effort? Is Mullings giving more effort? Is he giving 100%? And maybe Edwards is only giving 80. Maybe in practice, that's what it is. They're going to play the guy who's given 110% over the guy that's given 75, 80 because he well, thinks he's expected is, to do it. Is there things happening in, uh, yeah, we don't know, I guess back yeah. battle for, uh, yeah, that's for position RB one, RB two. It's possible. It's only two I, weeks I, into this. I, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess the, three weeks in the, the question, season. the questions are, are, are happening and coming up because of the performance. I but think it's, it's because the quarterback's been that, that bad. You, it's befuddling to me that I guess you just have all this time to play and you have a guy with six interceptions, 40, 444 yards, 66 completion percentage. And we've decided to go with the guy who, when he comes in, has only ever ran three for six, 50. Per He's basically, basically Anthony Richardson, just less or more. Who knows? Hope, as a Michigan fan, hopefully more. Yeah, but yeah, but you can't throw the ball. He threw the ball right Two guys. Like, you can't just throw the ball to people. Like, he's a... Uh, he, great oh, story. Warren there. is a great story for Warren, but he wouldn't start on any team in the Big Ten. So why is he starting on Michigan? And, and to be honest, Tuttle's probably the best quarterback that they have on the roster right now, and he's hurt. He's never healthy.
he at least Tuttle had three four hundred yard games. Best ability is availability. That's what orgy is. Orgy is a freaking monster. Good luck taking the him down. Of, they have Denegal too. They got Denegal too. He's a huge running. Denegal. If any of the quarterbacks that you would say are Anthony Richardson, it's Denegal. Cause that guy, I think he's six, seven, six, six, 240 pounds. He's a freaking monster. Alex is six, three, 235. Here's the thing. If orgy gets out in the open, he does get around the corner. It's college football. So you, if you can get around the corner and you're the fastest guy in the field, you you can score a touchdown. It's just all about getting, no matter who Michigan has that quarterback, it's that's not going to be a winging it down the field. They're not going to be throwing, airing it out. It's not going to be an air raid. So I guess that they're a running team. They know that. So if he throws 15 times a game, and he throws an interception, throws a touchdown. It's not any different to what they were getting with Warren. And if he does suck, they'll probably go back to Warren anyway. But until then, I want to see orgies in the end zone. I want to see him run the ball up the gut. I want to see him run around the corner. I want to see him hand it off. I want to see touchdowns. I don't care. I want to just see him win. I, if they come out and they beat USC, I'll be happy. I guess that's all it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, definitely. People are sick of watching a guy throw 15 out of 18 and the three incompletions are all interceptions and that happens every week. So I think people were sick of that. There's Michigan is not, that has never been known for a school that throws a lot of interceptions. They've always took care of the football turnovers are something you can't have. Yeah, I think that's why he got benched. The years before Jim Harbaugh are still fresh in my mind. So I, I don't know. I had more hope for Sharon Moore, but it's clear to me. He's, he's in over his head. He, he cares more about being a friend than being a coach. Yeah, I think that's the problem, too. I think he waited too long to bench him. Warren could have still been the starter, but maybe in the game when he's struggling, you take him out, you let him sit on the sidelines, reevaluate what's going on on the field, and you just keep running the ball. You were pounding the ball down their throat. Just keep pounding the ball and let that offensive line be what it is. You guys regroup, regather yourself. And maybe not throw those passes because there was honestly a couple of those times they threw the ball. I think it was second and six. One of them was like third and three. They could have probably ran for a first down. But that's me. That's me as a fan thinking that we can just beat the hell out of everybody because we did it last year against Penn State. It's me as a fan. Like you said, you got to be able to separate those things. And obviously, as the coach, he's struggling to be able to do that. But. Yeah. I just we well, Charles, we know we have what we have at Michigan at quarterback. You've got a red shirt freshman who already his parents came out flat out and said he's not playing even if he's red shirted and he's allowed to play four games. He ain't playing because we're not risking him getting hurt because they assume that this dude is a straight up blue blood gonna be in the NFL quarterback. I'm like, how do you know that without playing? How do you know you're gonna be in the NFL? That's what bothers me. He doesn't he wants to red shirt. It has nothing with, to do with him not being ready. He just didn't want to play. And that makes me think that maybe he's going to transfer out of Michigan next year. I mean, but if he doesn't transfer out, he's going to be the starter. Unless they transfer in, you know, unless it was Harbaugh's plan all along to keep getting quarterback transfers. All these quarter, all these quarterbacks Michigan has on the roster, Warren, Denegal, I believe Orgy might have been recruited. Tuttle definitely was a backup somewhere. I think he came from what Indiana. He's on an experienced transfer who adds depth to the roster. Jack, what you got going on there? Be, how can you be a transfer and how can you be an experienced transfer and be redshirted? Who's this? That the person you were talking about, Jack Tuttle. I have no idea. I don't know how he could be redshirted either. He 2000. He's been playing since 2019. Who are you talking about as a redshirt then? Jaden Davis. Javen Jaden Davis is redshirted. His his parents basically came out and said that he's not playing this season, even if they wanted him to play because they don't want him to risk injury and blah 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 blah. I I, I understand. I understand. It's but. Huh. Yeah, I've never heard of the kid. 
Oh, that's who we were talking about last year. Yeah, he was like the number two or number three quarterback in the class, I think. Yeah, he's the number 35 guy on ESPN right now. 35 player, but I believe he was like number two or number three quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty good. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Orgy's in the end zone. I don't don't know. I want to see two or three of them this week. Why yeah. can't they get the tush push going with him? He's big enough. I'm just confused at, at hearing you talk right now, man. That's not football. That's it's exactly what we laugh and joke about. I laugh time. and joke you're, about you're it until it works. You're you're until it works about, for you're, my you're, team. Dude, until you're I'm laughing here about, about it. A fucking quarterback like he's a running back. I didn't hear you one time. Not one fucking time. Talk about a pass, dude. Well, who's he gonna throw? Run up the well, middle. One, who's he gonna throw the ball? Who's he gonna throw the ball to? Listen, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> we ain't winning no fucking football game, dude. Like their this, offense it, can't listen, be much I, different. I want. You know what? I want. I'm gonna be the negative Nancy on Michigan. This yeah, year. Not especially gonna after hearing that, bro. Like the best thing we got is running up the middle with a quarterback. Losing. No, no, no. I said hand it off or run around the corner, run around the you end. Said I said be a running team. Gun, hand, you said, yeah, you said yeah. Run, hand it off. Hand it run off, off the gut. And run around the edges. Yep, you play to your strengths. Just run. Yeah. <laughs> just I, Honestly. Just fucking run. That's because of the pit. You, I mean, well, let's be honest. They don't have None a play of that action. Teams here, by the way. They don't have a play action. Yeah, they don't have a play action. But well, apparently, they can't throw the ball either. How are we winning a fucking football game? Hey, man, you did that. Well, defense, defense. Uh, we have, fuck, we lost Rod Moore. That was that's the end of it. The, the end of the whole defense. We got one interception, I think. <laughs> like, see you want to know what the you want to know what the problem with the defense is too though i said this earlier <laughs> they did they the fucking guy blitz the new wink martindale he blitzes like 60 yeah. percent. that's too much you let that yeah. you got the if you have the best defensive line on paper not saying they do have the best defensive line but as far as nfl prospects go they've got three of the top 15 defensive linemen in college football on their d line and guess what yeah they blitz, blitz, blitz. Well, guess what? The freaking they know it's coming. They blitz a safety. Guess where that guy goes? Right over the top. And ninety percent of the time in college, you always say fastest man wins. If you're it, buying a ticket, if you're looking for the ticket to my train, right? Like the train I'm on that, that comes for this Michigan season. It's the front office decided that we weren't going to be a good football team, and as a fan, you should just understand that. And I'm okay with it at this point. I've, I've seen the product on the field. Week one, week two, week three. We're a good football team. We're not a great football team. And any team that, that has playoff hopes is going to beat our ass. I did not give them any... I did not give I them a chance to beat Texas at all. Not I already I called that game. I thought they lose by twenty and they lost by nineteen. So I was one week too early on yeah. the Peyton Manning era in Texas. There's a lot going on in Texas, by the way, and there's a lot to talk about. They just well, a lot more you guys need Texas. to settle down with them playing Texas Tech or Texas State or whatever the hell team they played last week. Anybody would look great against that crappy defense. Yeah, he's going to be good. But wait till he plays a legit defense in the SEC before you start talking about it. He plays a Georgia or an Alabama defense and lights one of those up. I, I'm excited to see what he is because he did break all of the other Manning's records at their high school. He's obviously, he's an incredible, phenomenal athlete. I just hope yeah, I mean, I think they went, don't. What, 10 for 12 or 12 for 15? Yeah, or and the, five, the dude's freaking, the dude's yeah, got yeah. legs. Dude's got legs. Yeah. yeah, and he's accurate as fuck and can put the ball where it belongs. Whereas wide receivers need to put, I'm just, yeah, I'll, I'll wait, but it's, there's, who was just talking about it? It's a really good wide receiver. I can't, I, I, anyways, uh, he, he was asked, like, when did you realize you had taken your quarterback for granted, right? And it was, I think it was like Joe Montana or something. But anyways, great quarterbacks put the ball where their wide receiver isn't going to get hit. Like we've heard this many times, right? You've heard this numerous yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, we've heard it in the NFL plenty of times. Manning puts the ball where his receivers don't get hurt this early in his career. That's fucking crazy. I don't care if it's a good defense or a terrible defense. 
right? That ball placement. It, you, that's what I was witnessing. And I, I think it's going to be fucking crazy to see. I, I, I hope you're right. Cause I don't, a lot I'm of those throws, those guys were wide fucking open. It's it. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple in there that were pretty impressive, but it's yeah. like I said, I want to see it against the five stars defense. Oh, I don't yeah. want to see it against a bunch of two this, stars. The, the we said the same thing about Caleb Williams until he played against the, Houston and he got sacked seven team. fucking times. So I mean, you were a hundred percent right on that one, by the way, you're like, wait till he plays a good defense. He's got sacked yeah. seven fucking times and turned the ball yeah. over three. You know, it should have been four. Yeah, he had three interceptions. And obviously, that this isn't really even a comparison because I, I no, have no, 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 no. I, I don't no think, way. I don't think it's going to be anything like that. I think he's still going to light him up regardless. But you, do you think and, he gets a starting job back? Lis or? Listeners of the show know that I am a very big quarterback critic. Yeah, right? there are things that I look for specifically. But when I see them, I get excited, and that's that's Manning, and that's crazy. If I was, can I Giants, ask you a question? I'd be selling my soul to the football gods. Do you think What's he that? gets his, you think Ewers gets his job back when he yes. comes back off? You think he gets his job back? Yes. So if Texas is averaging 48 points a game it's and they're going the into the SEC. Do we know how long the injury? I believe he's out for two to two to three weeks, I think. Okay. The lower, I thought it was lower leg injury. Well, I can't remember yeah. what it was. Well, I mean, um, yeah, with, he's out for a couple of weeks, but I don't know who they play. Let's see who they play. With, that's going to tell you about, whether or not I'm, I'm not plays. even worried about who you're looking at. Him. I'm, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just cu out of curiosity. That's all. Yeah, you're looking at that. The explanation behind the, the Yeah, he, he'll he definitely play the next two weeks. Yeah, uh, you've got U University of Louisiana Monroe and you've got Mississippi State. Uh, and then they then they are at home versus Oklahoma. Yeah, he'll play until they play Oklahoma because then after Oklahoma's Georgia. Yeah, Ewers will be back. But if he does struggle against Georgia, I don't, like you said, I don't think they hesitate putting him in, to be honest with you. What you saw, you're like, what you have now. It's, it's so scenario. It's going to be interesting. Let's just say that. Because here's, it's such, it's, okay, obviously if Manning isn't playing great, but you got to look at a scenario also where if plays that can't be done with yours are being done well with Manning and these plays are allowing other players that wouldn't normally be in the mix to get in the mix, you may end up cutting in the locker room a rapport by going back to yours in that scenario. But if, if he does lose always, his job. Guess who's going to yeah, be in the I mean, transfer portal next year? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> she should go to the NFL regardless. Ewers? He loses his job or not, yeah. Eh. Dude, to start that, before he got hurt, he had the best odds to win the Heisman. He's, yeah. They're not that great of stats. Eight touchdowns, two picks, 600 yards. I, don't, don't yell at me. You're I'm telling you, Ray. I'm, tell, I'm telling. Hey, I'm, I'm telling gonna tell you. Him. I'm gonna tell you something right now. <laughs> Kyle McCord from Syracuse is gonna be in the Heisman candidate conversation. Yeah, I'm not okay, saying he's gonna win it, but he's gonna be in. I think he's got 11 touchdowns and one interception or some shit. He's freaking balling out at Syracuse. If you, if you go look at Cam Ward's stats. <laughs> Who? Cam Ward. Who the hell's that? For Miami. That's yeah. Go look at his stats. I want to, when they play somebody, I'll look at it's ACC. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is college fucking football. We ain't going to see anybody play anybody unless you're one of those four fucking schools we, we talked about already. You, you ain't, you're only going to see it when it comes to the playoff. The Heisman has nothing to do with fucking playoffs. This kid is balling, bro. <laughs> it is balling. Okay, I read and, that and, wrong. I was like, holy shit, you can't have 50 touchdowns already. I was like, <laughs> three weeks. I was at 11. Yeah, 11 and one. Is he, is he on pace for 50? That, I, no, no, his long is 50. Oh, yeah. Was he 11 and one right now? Considering the fact that they only ran the ball freaking 40 times this year. Yeah, you, they throw their air raid. They just throw the ball. You can pick it apart all you fucking want. I'm just telling you the odds makers right now, man. And Cam Ward is up there. I think. Now, after this week, um, Archie's moved up to 15, I believe, if I remember that correctly. And 
you can't fight the odds makers, dude. It is what it is. It, it, these writers are, are terrible for the most part, bro. Oh, yeah, it's weird. People, it's just the weird. People, the people with votes yeah. are fucking weird, man. Everyone knows the Heisman should have went to fucking Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah, I know. Like, I, the Heisman should have went to Aiden Hutchinson. But they were so terrified of another Peyton Manning situation. Peyton Manning and Desmond Howard situation. Or Charles Woodson, I, I'm sorry. But it would fuck them all. I don't even care. It's so frustrating. But it's it just it is what it is. And then and listen, we saw that Michigan that Texas team play it. And, and as much as it hurts the fan yeah. and you out loud, looking at that team on the sideline, I was watching Michigan last year. That's and I was watching Georgia two years before that and Alabama a few years before that, right? There yeah. is a look when it comes to a championship team. There is a vibe, a feeling from the one fucking end zone to the other from the sideline all the way back to the fucking last fan up in the stands right it is an energy and that energy right now is coming from texas it's not coming from georgia it's not coming from ohio state it's not coming from like any other school yeah but that is a like that Miami gauntlet and, and to go texas. through to go into an alabama or into a georgia those are incredibly difficult places to to win so if they do come out of that if they come out of the SEC with a, I'm going to say it, even with like one loss, like maybe they lose they, one they, game. They, they I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's going to be the end of their season. I'm saying that, I'm saying they're, I'm saying they're the no, dead on favorite if they come out with one loss, no, like I agree with hands you. down. I agree you know what you. I mean? No, I agree with you. What I was getting at is Texas has arguably been preparing themselves for this. They've been playing teams like Alabama and Georgia for the last few years, getting ready to come into the SEC. Texas has been doing it right. I wish Paul was in here. Fuck, I, I don't say a lot of great things about his teams lately. So, <laughs> Wow, they really avoid a lot of teams this year, though. The toughest teams they play the rest of the season are Oklahoma, Georgia, and Texas A&M. Dang, and they avoid it a lot. They got a pretty easy schedule can, the rest of the way. And, here's, and, and we can poke fun at that all we want. We can. And we can tell you're a bitch or a pussy all we want, but the bottom line is... When it comes down to the playoff committee, the way Texas looks and their schedule, as we can say, well, that's why they're ranked the number one team in the country right now. They beat the pants off Michigan, and then they, they went in and they, care they business went last into week. The third largest football stadium in the world, and basically said we're not paying rent. It's maybe that's why I'm high on them, and maybe the exact opposite effect of what's happening to you is happening to me with them. But I'm watching these other teams around the country play right now, Patrick, and, and name a better school. And What's that, right now? Really, a better really school? Honest. I would say Ohio State is probably on pace with them. As far Ohio State hasn't looked like they're missing a beat as far as what they've been doing the last four years. But we know what happened. We know who's coaching no, over no, there. It's Ryan Day. No, I, and the, regardless of the last four years and the last three weeks of football. And I don't care that Ohio state didn't play this week, whatever. Ohio state has not looked great. They've looked like they look like they spent a lot of money, but they don't look great. On uh, offensively, they have a huge question at quarterback. They really do. I mean, the, the Tennessee has looked really fun. Tennessee's looked really good too. Tennessee has looked good. Tennessee has looked really good. Tennessee, these are Tennessee scores 69 to 3, 51 to 10, and 71 to nothing. I don't care who you played. I don't Is care who you played. Coming, that's the scores they I beat, look for good they football beat, teams. They beat a, tw the, the NC State was ranked 24th. They beat them 51 to 10. That's a beat now. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, and they play Oklahoma I, this week. And if they score 50 on Oklahoma, oh boy, that offense is good. Really nice. Yeah. It's going to be very exciting. It's going to be very. But I think. But yes, think the best right team and the the best team hands down in college football right now, with without even question, is Texas. And well, Texas it, just it played just... last week with a hat with a with Arch Manning, and he hadn't even thrown a pass yet. And what did he do? He just went out there and completely looked like he was freaking Mister Wise there, just throwing darts everywhere. Yeah, with Ted for twelve so, or twelve for fifteen, two something. I, I, he could have been twelve for twenty. The, those twelve passes that he did complete were a hundred percent where they needed to be like you said yeah 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 no it is it's gonna it's gonna be interesting oh i thought saquon was hurt <clears throat> falcons are putting up a fight in this game it's gonna be a great conversation. i'm telling you man they don't want to go down oh two all right we can break down one thing your biggest what's your biggest impression from the nfl so far this season is it more so that the baltimore ravens are oh and two 
or the fact that the Chargers are 2-0? and I guess it would have to be the Baltimore because I'm not surprised. I, I'm i not shocked hearing that Harbaugh is 2-0. and it's, it's just... Harbaugh is the type of guy who gets 110 out of everyone. It does. You're a three star and you play like a four. You're a four star. You play like a five. That's just Harbaugh gets the best out of you a hundred percent of the time. It's one of the greatest coaches I've seen really in a long time. I just their schedule hasn't been anything impressive. They they won two games that I think everybody probably thought they. They, they should have won. He should have beat the Panthers, but the, oh, the Raiders yeah. game was a toss up because you didn't know what you're going to get. Especially how, the, especially how the Raiders just beat. They just beat Baltimore. Yeah. They just beat Baltimore. Yeah. The Chew, man. Gardner Minshew. Yeah. That'll be fun to talk about come tomorrow's cast. It is. It's. It's wild. I don't, I don't really understand it. The injuries, the it seems chaotic. The NFL does. To be well, honest. I mean, you got next week. Da, 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 da. What do you have here? The Ravens got to go to Dallas. I mean, it did. The schedule just doesn't get. Granted, Dallas got stomped by New Orleans, but it's almost winter go home for Dallas at this point, even though they're one and one, because they did not look good. They did not look good against New Orleans at all, which is a very big surprise to me. It's like they did. It's like they weren't ready to play. Yeah. Yeah. We'll hit that list tomorrow too. probably start the show off talking about the O and two teams. Yeah. We could get a list together. Surprises and not so much surprises. I think that would be hilarious. Well, that, Falcons are doing a really good job stopping the run. That's crazy. What's what's your biggest college? Well, I'll do with what's your biggest college football takeaway from the weekend? Biggest college football takeaway? Yeah. I I would say the fact that these teams that uh, the Notre Dame thing is killing me. The fact that they only dropped them like five or six spots. I think they still got them like ten, like eleventh or twelfth in the coaches' poll. I just I don't get it. Notre Dame is not a good football team. I guess they're a good football team, like you said, because I guess we can't say Michigan's a good football team and then say Ohio State or Notre Dame is shit. Yeah, they're a good football team, but man, they just, they get way too much credit for not doing anything. That's my big takeaway. Yeah, I, mean, I just, I'm sick wow, of it. It looks like the AP 25 has Notre Dame at 17 and Michigan at 18. Yeah. And the coaches poll has Notre Dame at 18 and Michigan at 17. Yeah, and Michigan got beat by the best team in the country at home. But yeah, they lost by 19. But you take away that 155 yard run and that that was a 30, that was a 24 to 12 game. They still got their ass kicked, but it was like, yeah, you, I mean, the, the it was expected. Got, yeah. yeah, it was expected. Yeah, yeah, top 25 round out at this point. You got Texas number one, Georgia number two, Ohio State number three. <laughs> they can't even... They don't even play a football game in the Alabama Ole Miss. Yeah, Tennessee's yeah. up there, number six. The Tennessee's looking good. Miami, Oregon. Yeah, they're all looking real good. You even got mm -hmm. Penn State. Oh, Penn State was another one of those Big Ten teams, uh, along with USC, that had a bye last week. Yeah. That's so weird, man. It's oh, so they do have Notre Dame behind Michigan in the uh, coaches. Yeah but they have them ahead of them in <laughs> the AP top 25 and they lost to Northern Illinois. Oh man. Talk about the spite. They just want to do that for spite. I just, I don't, I've never understood the Notre Dame love. I don't think I ever will to be honest. There's, all, there's been a couple of years where they were better, but for the most part, they were always behind Michigan. Yeah. Is there any game you're looking forward to next week? I'm looking well, forward. I guess, I guess this upcoming week. You said that kid at Syracuse, what was his name there? Didn't he used to play at Ohio State? Yeah, Kyle McCord is doing very well. Yeah, they play Stanford on Friday. I might catch that game. I'm looking forward. I guess I'm looking forward to the Tennessee-Oklahoma game. It's the only top 25 like matchup. Utah-Oklahoma State, I think both these teams, they're both these teams are going to drop down into the low 20s or by the end of the season. 
they're just all going to beat up on each other in the Big 12. Yeah, but yeah. Illinois and Nebraska play on Friday too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Yeah, that's tomorrow, Friday game. Yeah, I got Nebraska coming out of that one at home. I'm assuming they're gonna. It's gonna be a 27 to maybe 17 game or something. 31, 21 game. USC at Michigan. That's at 2:30. Correct. Notre Dame plays Miami of Ohio. I bet they lose that game. Miami of Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Miami of Ohio. Yeah, North they haven't won a, They haven't won a football game all year, and, and Northwestern beat them. I, eh, it might be a tough task for Miami to upset Notre Dame, but you, you just, first, I mean weird, weirder things have happened. Get their first win of the game, all right, first win of the season. Uh, Iowa, Minnesota. That that's not going to be any good. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you and I are on the same page here, Broski. I think. I think we're looking forward to about the same games. Army plays Rice. Go Army, beat Rice. That'll be fun to watch. I'm always, I always love catching those games in the middle of the the week, yeah, yeah, especially yeah, when yeah, they yeah. play on like a Thursday or a Friday night. Those are always the fun ones. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh, all right, the kick is up and good at this point in the podcast. The Eagles are above the on the Falcons, seven to three. All right, you got anything else you wanted to bring to the table? No, I think we'll touch on her tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Big show coming up tomorrow. That'll be exciting. Huge week of football yet again. I think it's hilarious that Don, dude, for the Eagles, who now has a coaching title, is in, like, as many TV shots as possible. Does he flex, too, on the sidelines? Is he over there doing the thing with the uh, arms he crossed? Just, or? He just... Oh, he's doing, like, the Herc. <clears throat> Yeah, he was super excited they just scored that touchdown. It was super funny. For all of our listeners out there, again, thank you for sticking with us for another show. It was fantastic. It's a beautiful world out there and filled with many beautiful people. And you inviting us into whatever part of your day you're listening to us, that's fantastic. We appreciate it greatly. Thank you so much for being you. The world is a much better place with you in it. And we love you more.